In the last three years, uh, employment figures of BAME in our industry has fallen from 7.4% to 5.4%. This is the worst it's been since they started taking a census. 2,000 people uh, employed in the cultural industry have left the business because they can't get work or they've hit a glass ceiling or there's just no opportunities out there for them. In a climate where the industry has grown employment-wise to 4,000. That means for every black or Asian person that's lost a job, two or more white people have got a job. This is a really bad situation, and it needs to turn around. But you've got to know it's bad if I'm saying something, because I'm, you know, Lenny the comedian. I, I you know, I've, I've been in the business since I was 16 years old. I generally get on with people. I don't have an axe to grind because I've had a very fortunate career. I've worked at the BBC since I was 19. So I've seen a lot of, I've seen a slow change, very, very slow change. Uh, and it would be great if it could accelerate. We're in the 21st century now. You know, we're 14.3% of the population. Why, does, why, doesn't, why don't our big institutions reflect that? For people watching television at home, listening to the radio, reading newspapers, magazines, why does it matter that the people working in the industry are diverse? It matters because... Um, if the people making the decisions about what we watch are not diverse, we will always end up watching the same stories over and over and over and over again. And this is in news, in comedy, in drama, in the soaps. We will be stereotyped. You're going to get the same view of Britain that you've always had. Whereas if we can increase BAME involvement, black, Asian, minority, ethnic involvement in the deciders, the people who decide what we see, what we make, uh, what scripts get commissioned, what actors get cast. If, if those people become more diverse, then what we see will become more diverse. What the writers write will become more diverse because they'll have to. When I'm in America and they, and they say, you know, you know, you Brits, you make Downton Abbey. That's a great show. There's no black people in Downton Abbey. Downton, there was recently, you had the jazz singer. But, um, you know, what, what, are you, what are you doing over there? I get asked what we do. It's like, like it's my fault. But they, they want to know what's going on because, you know, over there they have scandal. They have, you know, they have parks and recreation. They, and these programs are representative of the, de the racial demographic and the gender demographic and the sexual demographic of America. And we don't do that. And I guess it's because it's a bigger minority there. They have a much more robust conversation about race in America than we do here. We are very fearful to talk about racism and institutionalized racism in this country. You know, if we have the conversation, we are called militant. We are called names because we want to talk about these things. We want to face up to them. I think it's time to face up to those problems and then put them behind us and move forward. What influenced you to be so passionate about this industry and this issue in this industry? First of all, I've had a journey in this industry myself, you know. I've been incredibly, my mum said I was very blessed. You you know, you, you're blessed, you know. You was a blessed child. I got to work at the BBC, I got to work at ITV. I was chosen by Michael Gray to be in The Fosters, the first ever black sitcom in this country. Um, and I've, I have, through my career, noticed things. I had a 30 year period where I never had a meeting with a BAME in a room. Never, not once. If you constantly work in a monocultural society or monocultural industry, you can, you can certainly face some challenges because often, and this is the point, when you're working in an industry where it's just you, you're isolated, and you can say things or do things that can be misinterpreted because people are from a different culture to you. Nearly 40 years in the industry. Why now? Why are you talking about this now? If not now, when? If not you, who? That was a big thing on Hope and Glory when it first started. Lucy Gannon wrote those lines. And I think that what's wonderful now is that a conversation has begun. We're having a conversation about diversity. We've tried to initiate this conversation before. I, I, had a, I made a speech for the Royal Television Society where I outlined all of these things uh, in 2008. It's like you're banging your fist against a wall. Eventually the wall's going to come down and the conversation can begin proper. And I think now there's a desire for change. And the more we keep talking, the more the door swings further and further open. And there will be change. And I'd like it to happen before I die, thanks.